Today we're going to add the ability to toggle whether or not we're building and add the ability to sell towers. So where we left off last time, once we selected a tower to build, we couldn't really stop building. So we're going to fix that now. To do that, we're going to switch over to the event sheet. We can recollapse our turret control for now. So what we want to do is deselect our crossbow whenever we click on an area where we're not building and not click the crossbow button. So we're going to add event for when we touch an object and we're going to select our grid background and hit done. So our grid takes up basically the entire play area. So whenever we click on it, that basically includes everything. So we're going to need to add a couple other conditions. So let's add another condition. For when our touch is touching object, our frame, click done. And we want to do this for it's not touching the frame. So if we touch somewhere that's not the frame and add another condition, when we touch an object, that it's not a wall. Because if we touch a wall, then we want to build. So if we don't touch a wall and we don't touch our build frame or any of the objects that happen to be in the build frame, then we want to deselect. So then we would go to system, set value, build select back to zero. We need to get rid of the object that is following the mouse. So add crossbow build and we want to destroy it. And we want to reset our cost label back to blank. Because if we have nothing selected, then there's not a cost. If we run that, we should be able to select our tower, place it, and if I click somewhere else, it gets deselected. But if I click in the frame, it stays selected. And if I click anywhere where I build a tower, then I keep it. Or if I can't afford one, then it just doesn't build one, but I don't lose it being selected either. And let's move that back into the build controls. Since we had just put it on the bottom instead of inside of our build controls group, let's go back to layout one. And I'm gonna add another couple options for selling a tower. So first I'm gonna add a text label. This is going to be a cell label. Put the text as cell 4. I'm going to make my text box take up all three squares. Then I'm going to put my horizontal alignment to center. And let's add a second text box. We'll make this our cell value. Then our text can be whatever number it is. That's just a placeholder. We'll set it in the code. Put that right underneath and also set this to center. And last, we want to put an icon for clicking on to actually sell the tower. So let's insert a sprite and let's load our cell icon. Let's make sure that our bounding box is set okay. So let's set this to bounding box so we can click anywhere on the shape. And let's just put that in the center right underneath our cell value. Let's give this a name like cell button. And let's head over to the code so we can implement that. So at the beginning of the code, we're gonna wanna set these things to invisible. So under my start of layout, I'm going to add an action to my cell button. Set visible is going to be invisible. The same thing for my labels. So my cell label, set text to blank, cell value, set text to blank. So now we need to implement that whichever tower is selected, we will have the ability to sell but we haven't implemented being able to select a tower yet. So I'm gonna add another group for upgrade controls, and that's gonna include being able to select a tower. So we're gonna add a sub event. 
So whenever we touch an object, and that object is our crossbow tower, and we're not currently building, system compare value build select is equal to zero. So if we're not currently building anything and we touch a crossbow, then we're going to want the cell button to be visible. We want our cell label to have the text that says cell four colon done. And we also want to have a cell value based on the value of the tower. Now we don't have a value yet, so let's go to our crossbow tower and add an instance variable. We'll add a cell value. And we need to set this where our towers are being built. So let's go to build controls. We're going to add an action to our crossbow that we just created. We're going to set the value of its cell value equal to our crossbow cost times 0 0.80. So it will be 80% of its normal cost that we can sell it for. Add action cell value. Set text is going to be our crossbow dot cell value. And let's check to see if I can build a new tower, deselect, and then select that tower and see what it would sell for. If I were to select a pre-existing tower, you'll see that it sells for zero because we never paid for it. So let's go ahead and remove those from the layout. Go to layout, switch over to my layers, and unlock my game layer. And I'm going to remove all my extra towers, but I don't want to remove the last one, so I'm going to move it just off the edge of the screen. And I'm actually going to put its ammunition with it, so I'm going to take my arrow, put it right with my tower. And so that this tower doesn't accidentally shoot anything, I'm going to go to behaviors, and I'm going to add the destroy outside layout behavior, so that when the game is created, this one will automatically get destroyed. And actually the default action for this arrow is to fire straight across, so we're going to move that just above our crossbow, and it'll move this way when our game starts, and then after it's traveled its distance, it will destroy itself. Back to our event sheet. Now when we do click our cell button, we don't want it to just destroy some random crossbow. We want it to destroy the one that we've selected. So I'm going to add a new global variable called upgrade ID, and that will keep track of the tower that I have selected. We'll give that the initial value of negative one, just so it doesn't accidentally get an object with the ID of zero when the game starts. Then we will add a system set value to our upgrade ID equal to our crossbows instance ID. And this is a unique identifier for that specific object. And add a new sub event to our build controls for when we touch an object that is our cell button. Add another condition. We also want our cell button to be visible so that we don't accidentally sell something when we don't know the button is there. And our last condition is going to be a system we want to pick an object. And let's do pick by comparison. And we want to select the crossbow object who has the crossbow instance ID that is equal to our upgrade ID. So it's going to go through all the crossbows and find the one that has the same ID value as the one that we stored. Before we destroy it, we actually want to take a number off of that. So let's go to our system. We're going to add to our money the crossbow's cell value. Anytime we update our money, we're going to want to update our money label. So let's copy and paste that from right here. And then we need to take our crossbow and destroy it. We also need to be able to deselect our tower. So let's go back to our upgrade controls. Let's add a new sub event. For when we touch an object, that'll be our grid. So we're going to add another condition 
system compare value build select is equal to zero. When we do this, we're going to want to retake our three options here, cell button, cell label, and cell value, and reset them back to not visible. So I can click the first one, hold shift, and click the third one. I'll select all three. I can copy those with control C, select this event to paste those three actions. And I also want to add system set value upgrade ID to negative one so that we no longer have anything selected. Now when we run this, we'll see that we can't actually select our tower, and that's because of the order of our events. So we actually want this to happen first, so that we can deselect something if we don't touch anything, and then it'll check to see if we're touching a crossbow afterwards, and then set all of its options. So everything gets reset to nothing, and then if we happen to touch a tower, that gets selected. So just by switching the order of these two, we'll see that this now works the way we want it to. Deselect. I can now select one, sell it, select this one, select the second one, and sell that. The problem that we see is that there's no visual indicator of which one we have selected. Create a new sprite load my range 100 image, which is just a semi-transparent 100 radius circle, which is the default value of our range. Then give our sprite the name of range and switch over to our event sheet. There are several places I want to add this. The first is under build controls, under our touch. I'm going to add another action, take the range and destroy any that might exist right after I build my crossbow object. And then I'm going to create a new one. So system create object. I'm going to create a range object on the UI layer. Mouse.x mouse.y done. So I'll delete any range objects that might already exist, create a new one at the same place as our crossbow that we're building. Then every tick that we move our crossbow build, we're going to have our range and we're also going to set the position to mouse.x and mouse.y. And when we click on our background and we stop having our crossbow build object, we're also going to want to destroy our range object that right by our crossbow build, which should mean that whenever I'm building an object, I now have a range object that goes with it. When I click the background, they both go away. Collapse my build controls, go to my upgrade controls. When we deselect everything, we're going to want to destroy any ranges that might exist on a tower that we have selected. And when we select a crossbow, we're going to want to create a range. So add action, system, create object, range on our UI layer. At the crossbows X coordinate and the crossbows Y coordinate. should allow me to select a crossbow and see its range. When it's deselected, that goes away. Add a couple more. So now as I select different towers, I can see which one's selected so that I don't accidentally sell the wrong one. 